Candle review part two. Ow! Goodness. Welcome back to Meteorology Monday. So after many requests and a few weeks off for Christmas, we are finally sitting down today to discuss what can I use an ATMS degree for. Before we start, I'll say one thing, all of these that I'm about to tell you make up about 90% of what you can use an ATMS degree for. I'm sure there's some obscure parts of atmospheric sciences that you can also use an ATMS degree for. Um, but these are just the top ones that we can think of and it's a long list don't get me wrong it's a long list so there's a lot of stuff on here give you guys some options tell you guys a little bit about what each one is I'm looking off to the right because there's my laptop right there with a list of stuff bad habit looking forward and also some of the things on the list kind of overlap with other things so I might be repeating a couple things I just said the word things a lot. Anyways, multiple things might be said multiple times. Moving on. So the first thing on our list that you can use an atmospheric sciences or ATMS degree for would be climatology. These are the people who work at NCEI or the National Center for Environmental Information, uh, which is located in Asheville, North Carolina. And these are the people who I don't know if any of you are from Florida like I am or have seen like the hurricane broadcast, but sometimes the the governor of a state in emergency will stand up and say, yada, 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 state of emergency, hurricane's coming, and off to meteorologists or climatologists so-and-so. These are the people who work for the state climatology office and help with this kind of stuff and give presentations uh, on a press conference level with the state. I don't know how else to explain it. State people also. Next we have operational meteorology. These are your forecasters, your TV people, your private sector forecasters like AccuWeather or the Weather Channel. These are also government forecasters like for the National Weather Service. More on that a little bit later. But yeah, your operational meteorologists are your basic level forecasters. You can also use an atmospheric science degree for teaching, of course. You gotta get up to the master's, doctor, PhD, all that kind of stuff, but hey professors, what's up? Future professors, hello. There's also private forecasting if you want to forecast independently. So like create your own forecasting company or work by yourself and forecast for individual insurance companies or small businesses that might need a single independent private sector meteorologist. Moving right along, we also have forensic meteorology, which I just learned about from dad and it sounds like the coolest thing ever. Forensic meteorologists who would be the ones to work with the court system and attorneys um, to do investigative meteorology. Awesome. <laughs> These would be the ones who would testify in court and such um, on behalf of, hey, yes, this weather event took place, yes, lightning struck this place at this time, on this day, yada yada, um, to prove or disprove any dispute going on in the court. So, investigative work and working with lawyers and stuff, so if that's what you want to do, forensic meteorology is the one for you. Now, of course, with an atmospheric science degree comes research. Most of you have to do it while you're in school, and you can actually do it professionally as well. Most atmospheric science fields that we're talking about on this list have some sort of research. To name a few that didn't make the list, you could be like an atmospheric physicist, maybe somebody who grows like, who studies like the, the growth of ice crystals and stuff and how it would affect the atmosphere, or how light interacts with different mediums and how light bends when it comes into the atmosphere, depending on the different type of thing in the atmosphere like water droplets or dirt or sand or dust or stuff like that, you know? These are also the people who would have a hand in making radars and doing the kind of behind the scenes for the tech development of that kind of stuff. Next is space weather. These are your atmospheric scientists who 
study not the weather in space because that's kind of silly there's no weather in space Kayla what are you talking about but more how the stuff that goes on in space affects our weather and our lower atmosphere so you know incoming solar radiation and how that makes like the aurora and maybe sunspots and how you know incoming stuff is depleting the levels of certain gases in our atmosphere these would be your space weather atmospheric scientists next is the travel industry so these are meteorologists who work specifically uh, in tandem with travel places so like ski resorts or cruise ships maybe theme parks like Disney World or Disneyland these are the meteorologists who specifically work with forecasting or coming up with um, weather safe plans for these bigger parks and events and stuff like that. We've also got the energy industry. These are the atmospheric scientists who work at places like Duke um, and help forecast like lightning. Like, hey, we have a storm coming, so there might be a lot of lightning with this. It's gonna be moving into X county at X time. So you might wanna be prepared and get some treks ready in case of power outages in this area. Basically anything of how like weather can affect the energy industry. Those are your energy industry atmospheric scientists. That was a mouthful. So those are more like general things. Some of those fall into this next category, which is government. So how can you use an atmospheric science degree in the government? There's a lot of like politics behind, oh, this belongs to this branch and this belongs to this branch. So I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. I'm sure you can do a Google search if you're really interested in knowing all of that with all the Department of Commerce, Department of Defense and all that. But underneath all of that craziness and all those umbrellas, you have your specifics like your National Weather Service, your Storm Prediction Center, your National Hurricane Center, you have the FAA, you have NOAA, your state government, the DOD, and also your military branches. Those all fall under government. Other than the regular forecasting, some cool things that you could do here is work for air traffic control, or you can work specifically with the state government. I know a bunch of the big states have it, New York, California, Florida, all have um, state meteorology, weather forecasting type stuff like that. So you would be more on the political side there, but also be an atmospheric scientist. So some options there. Sticking in that same bucket, but going non-federal, you have your places like commercial airlines. So how a meteorologist could work with commercial airlines, doing the forecasting again, hey, we have a storm moving into you know Kansas, so maybe don't fly through Kansas, or maybe fly earlier, fly later, hey, expect delays, stuff like that. Same thing with FedEx, UPS, all of the major you know, delivery services and stuff. On top of that, you also have your non-federal contractors. So these are the people where the government says, hey, I need X, Y, and Z done, but I don't wanna do it myself, so let's hire you to do it instead. A bunch of places that are government contractors like this that still do meteorology are Harris, Barron Services, Lockheed Martin, Vaisla, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and companies like that. So if you wanna work for a contracting job like that, most likely your job as an atmospheric scientist would be to help do research and development or do specific forecasting depending on what the contract is for. So if you wanna know more about this, let me give you a quick example. Back in the day, dad used to work for Harris and they were government contracted to create a program algorithm type thing to tell aircrafts when it's not safe to fly due to icing and how often each hour or each day they would need to be de-iced depending on the weather conditions. So how meteorology and atmospheric sciences applies to things like that. Coming down to the last few on our list, we have what I'm gonna be calling the joint degree type things. Um, so these are your atmospheric chemists. So there's kind of, um, you're an atmospheric scientist, but you also specialize in chemistry. And if you have a degree like this and you're really interested in both atmospheric sciences and chemistry, you can use that really well in the air pollution and air quality control industry. States like California, this is really big because you know they got all those fires and stuff and the air quality gets really bad. So there are a lot of jobs like this out west. You've also got your agriculture trade industry where you can have um, meteorologists who are just specifically there to forecast 
hey, it looks like there's going to be a big storm, so you might want to do something about your crops, or your climatologists who say, hey, this year is set to be the driest on record, and in past years we're kind of going through the cycle, so maybe take that into consideration. You're gonna need a budget for more water, stuff like that. That is one part of it. Another part is also your meteorologists and atmospheric scientists who are specific to agriculture, like they went for a joint degree. Um, your environmental studies and stuff like that. These people are the ones who went to school for atmospheric sciences and studied you know, soil moisture content and the nitty gritty of agriculture there. So you can use an atmospheric science degree that way as well. And the last two topics we've kind of talked about in a roundabout way, you've got your meteorological engineers. So the people who actually like build the research and develop things like in government contracts um, again places like Northrop Grumman and Harris and the last one will be your ATMS computer scientists these are the people who put together all the codes for like the models um, the forecasting models and stuff or the code behind radars anything that involves you know clicking away at that keyboard which is fun not for me but it's fun and with that last one I think that's gonna wrap up the list for today Again, as I said earlier, this is probably only 90% of the things that you can do with an ATMS degree. Probably forgot 10% or just don't know about it, so don't hate me for that. <laughs> Anyways, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. Last week was our bloopers video, which I thought was absolutely hysterical, so check that out if you haven't already. Special shout out to Paul, Luke, Luke. Paul for watching. Of course, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, still waiting on that snow that we were talking about a couple videos ago, but you know it's coming. Maybe. Hopefully. We'll see. Until next time, I'm Kayla. Thanks for watching and happy figuring out what you're going to do with your ATMS degree. <laughs>